Hey, my name is Katie. Welcome to the Book Buddies, and today's video is going to be my Booktubeathon wrap up and my, or the rest of my August TBR. So for Booktubeathon, I finished all seven challenges and all seven books. I did have to switch out two of my books that were in my in my TBR for the Booktubeathon with two manga because I was running out of time. Um, I read. 1,693 pages this week, and I am very proud of myself. <laughs> I ended up with three five-star reads, one four-star, and two three-star, which is like also really impressive to me because I had a really good reading week. Let's be honest. Three of these reads were novels, two of which were manga, one was a novella, and one was an audiobook. Being said, let's get on to the books. I'll just be going with it through these in the order in which I read them. So the first book I read was The Silver Mask, book four in the Magisterium series by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. I used this book for the first challenge, which is flip a coin to see which book you are going to read first. Um, I will give you a general synopsis of what this is about, um, or of what the series is about, not this book specifically. It is the fourth book in a series. Um, the Iron Trial or the Magisterium series is about a boy named Cal or Call. I I say Cal. I know some people call him Call, um, who has been told his whole life that magic is dangerous and he should have nothing to do with it. But he is forced to participate in the Iron Trial, in which he does does his best to fail, <laughs> and actually ends up not pretty much and it follows him through his five years of the magisterium and the ridiculous and pretty dark story that follows um that being said this is a pretty dark middle grade it's not like intense and there are parts that actually made me laugh and like the most inopportune times did i laugh can i say it's dark but it keeps it from being too dark if you know what i mean i greatly enjoy this series um it's probably one of my favorite middle grade series, if I'm being completely honest, and I do recommend it for those of you who like pretty dark but simple and easy um, middle grade fantasies. The next book I read was The Slow Regard of Silent Things by Patrick Rothfuss. This was the other book in my coin toss. Um, this is a novella about Ari, who is one of the characters in his King Killer Chronicles. This is just a bittersweet look at Ari's life throughout the week and what she does and that kind of thing. For this, I am not going to tell you much because aside from my like 10 minute long ramble in my vlog about like my feels and stuff, um, I want to do a like actual in-depth review of this because I believe that it deserves one. Um, and I just need to be able to get all of my thoughts concise and um, legible understandable but yes i adored this book this was one of my five star reads and i loved it <laughs> um this made me even more excited for the doors of stone which should be coming out next year i believe which is the third and final book in the king killer chronicles and i cannot wait to see what Mr. Rothfuss has in store for us. This book has been progressively better and I am just ready. <laughs> the third book I read, which I do not have, was the audiobook and it was The Little Prince by, I had to write it down, um, Anton de Saint, Anton de Saint, name I can't pronounce, but I can do the first three at least. <laughs> um, and that is just, it's it's a it's about a it's about a guy that crashes in the Sahara Desert and meets the little prince and lessons get taught. I I really don't know what to say about this book. This was one of my three star books. I enjoyed it. It was good. It was cute. Um this was the book to movie adaptation challenge, which I will say I like the movie, the Netflix original film much better than the book. The movie is adorable, the soundtrack is phenomenal, um, the book is cute. I can't, I can't say it's one of my favorites. The book I read was Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore and this was a reread, oh by Robin Sloan by the way. This was a reread and I gave it three stars this time. The first time I did not leave a star rating so I don't remember 
what I was thinking of it when I um, first read it. I know for a fact that I enjoyed it the first time I read it much more than the second time. This is definitely a type of story that you want to go into not really knowing what's going on. Um, I will say just for video's sake that it is about a man named Clay who is having a hard time getting a job in his field of graphic design and he decides to work at a very weird bookstore that run or the night shift of a very weird bookstore with a very kooky kooky owner. There are bits and pieces of this that I really didn't like for one thing. The romance in it was really weird and I didn't think that it was necessary. Just in general the romance was kind of odd. There were some really misogynistic little bits in there. Um, and then there was just some some places that I were really random and I didn't understand what it had to do with anything. But regardless, I did I do think it's an enjoyable read. It's something that's fun and it's interesting. It is definitely something that you probably I would not really recommend rereading <laughs> because it was not as interesting the first, the second time around. But regardless, I enjoyed it. The third book I or the fourth what book is this? One, two, three, four. This is the fifth book, was The Golem and the Genie by Helen Wecker. I still have this from the library. <laughs> um, this is a story about two mythical creatures meeting in New York. See, the, it's a Jewish name, so it would be Chava, I believe. Chava, with a ch, instead of a ch, um, who is a golem. And she comes to New York and then there is Ahmad who is a or Ahmad or Ahmad I don't know how you say it I think it's Ahmad but anyway who um, is a jinn or a jinni genie from Syria I believe um, they both meet in New York and some interesting stuff happens to be honest I would consider this what, how many stars did I give this? I gave this four stars. This was my other, this was my four, one four star book. Um, this was really interesting. I would say that this is a historical fantasy contemporary, if that makes sense. There is a second book coming out, which I actually didn't know about when I first started it. But, um, oh, and by the way, this was the beautiful spine challenge. I did not tell you what Mr. Penumbra... Mr. Penumbra was the book that I... about something that I would like to do, um, which is work at a bookstore. But anyway, back to this. Um, I... it was such an interesting... I don't even know. Like, it, it was really good. I would... like, this was really good. I really enjoyed it. I would definitely recommend this to people. Um, I will say that the last like five or six chapters I blasted through and not necessarily because a lot of stuff was happening. I blasted through it because I did not have time to like sit and soak in what was going on. So I'm probably going to have to go back and re-list or reread the last six chapters so I know for certain that I know what's happening um, or know for fact how it ends um, and that I'm not like missing anything. But regardless, I really enjoyed this book. This was really, really good. This was probably, this is probably one of my favorite historical fantasies I've ever read. And I don't generally like contemporary, but this one made it very interesting, especially because it's a historical fantasy. I mean, it's about a golem and a genie in New York. What more could you ask for? Then the last two books that I read were One Punch Man Volume 2 and 3. This one I used for the... Uh, hat challenge and this one was for book with a, with green on the cover. One Punch Man is about a dude named Saitama who is a hero for fun and he, all he has to do is hit you once and you're dead basically. You just blow up and he doesn't even have to try. Um, I'm not gonna, again these are volumes two and three, I'm not gonna really tell you anything about them. These were my What are, these were five star. These were five star. I already rated these like a long time ago, um, but these two were five star as well. Um, but I rated these, like I said, like two or three years ago when I first read them, and I'm not going to bother changing it. So I don't really count it as, as one of the star ratings because I didn't really rate them. They were already rated. So um, these two books replaced... Uh, Mirror and Goliath and 
the anvil of the world because they were just too long and I did not have time to read them. Okay, that is it for my wrap up. The last thing that I read was, and am currently reading, was The Adventure Zone, Here There Be Gerblins. During the readathon, I actually read about 30 pages. I read the first chapter. Um, so I'm counting it anyway, and I think that this is a good segue into my TBR if I do say so myself. Um, so yes, this I am currently reading. I'm on page, where am I? I am on page 147, so I'm almost, I'm over halfway through. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little over halfway through with this and it is adorable. I love it so much. It's so cute. There are some of the cutest scenes in this that I was like, worried we're going to get messed up and it wasn't um just like to tell you what it's about this is about or this is by all of the McElroys um I think it was translate it was translated into this form by Clint and the illustrator Carrie Pech Pech Carrie Pech I think is how you say her name if I remember correctly I did look it up but I really bad with the names. Um, but anyway, this is the first arc of their podcast, The Adventure Zone. I recommend you go and read it, I on or watch, or listen to it. I really cannot tell you anything about it without getting super spoilery because I just adore The Adventure Zone. It is a tabletop podcast. Um, the first, their first game was this, which is Balance. The first story is Balance. This is the first arc of Balance. And then the one that they're on now is Amnesty. And they're not playing Dungeons and Dragons. I don't remember the game what the game is called, but they're not playing Dungeons and Dragons. And it, it's a different tabletop game. This book I will be reading for this month is a book that I borrowed from Kayleen. She actually wanted me to read it, and I was like, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna read it. She handed it to me, and I was like, alright. Um, and it is Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappa. And if I remember correctly, this is about a girl named Eliza who is, who makes a webcomic and she meets the most popular fan fiction writer for her comic book or for her webcomic. And you know, it's a, it's, it's a contemporary, so I think you know where it leads, but I think it'd be interesting. I myself actually write a webcomic. I write two. I write two and I think it'd be interesting to actually read about somebody else who writes a webcomic. Hey! The book I'm going to be reading, I am also um, borrowing from Kayleen. I borrowed two books from Kayleen. Um, and it is Cinder by Marissa Meyer. I have not read this series. I really had no interest in it, but a friend of mine told me that one of the characters in Scarlet reminded her a lot of one of my characters. And I was like, you know what? Now I have to read it. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure that this is a Cinderella retelling where Cinder is an um, cyborg and it is a sci-fi version of the story and then Scarlet is Little Red Riding Hood and so on and so forth. Um, but yes, I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm excited for this because I don't really like sci-fi and I don't really read middle or uh, YA anymore, but you know what? I'm gonna give it a try. I'm going to at least get to Scarlet and read Scarlet regardless because I have to meet this character that is apparently a lot like mine. I have to. I have to. I have to. Okay, and I actually have two more books that I'll be reading. They'll both be audiobooks. I am going back to school soon and I thought that it would be good to have something to listen to on the way there. I won't be able to finish both of them on the way there and I'll probably listen to quite a bit of it before I leave. But the first one that I am going to read, I've actually started both of these. Um, the first one is Tropic of, Stim of Serpents, a memoir by Lady Trent, book two by Marie Brennan. So I've already started this book, like I said, and I actually got almost finished with it and I stopped listening to it. That was almost a month and a half ago. So I'm actually going to just go ahead and start it over and listen to and listen to it that way probably while I'm painting or while Lady Trent memoirs are about a spunky young lady <laughs> named Isabel who has an obsession with dragons and is actually a naturalist and it is about her traveling the world and learning more about dragons and doing that kind of thing to be honest you could 
put this in our world, put it in the Victorian era and say that she was looking for, I don't know, lions or some other kind of animal that's like all over the world, that kind of thing. And it would be basically the same story, but you know, it's dragons. It is a different world. It is not our world. It is not Victorian London. It's uh, Skierland. I, I, I think that's how you say it. It's it's a fictional country named Skierland where she's from and it's just very interesting, very entertaining. I genuinely really like it because they do, Marie Brennan does a wonderful job of painting the time period in which she's, which this takes place in and making it <laughs> not awful, <laughs> if that makes sense. A lot, a lot of people try to make, like end up making the Victorian era terrible and like it was it's not misogynistic which is really nice it shows a very very strong-willed woman and other strong-willed women in a professional setting which is something that is not often shown especially in a Victorian era setting and she is respected maybe not liked but respected by her peers and I really appreciate that I think that she is very well written and I very just I really like it <laughs> And the last book I will be reading or listening to is God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. This is about a girl named Mia Corvere who joins a assassin school in order to seek revenge on the people who killed and destroyed her family. It's so dark. Oh my gosh. It's so dark and it's really, really good. I, <laughs> I finished Nevernight and I was like, you know what? I'm not reading these nope nope I'm done I was really salty about the ending and then God's Grave came out and I was like I need it I need it now <laughs> um and so like early this year like January February I started it but I couldn't finish it um and I just like put it away I was like you know what whatever it's fine I'll get to it eventually and hopefully I will be able to get to it this month Again, this is going to be something that I'm going to be reading or listening to while I'm painting or doing something else, getting ready during the day, and then probably <laughs> if my mother lets me, who's going to be in the car with me on the way to school, listening to it on the way to school because she is not into this kind of thing and I know she doesn't really pay attention to the books that I listen to, but you know, Every once in a while you, you catch a word and it startles you. <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see about that one. All those are the books that I have planned to read this the rest of the month and the books that I read for Booktubeathon. I, it's been a good month so far. I'm very much in a reading mood. So let's hope I can get through to all of them, especially Cinder and Eliza and her monsters because those <laughs> I have to give it back and I have to give them back before I go to school in two weeks so <laughs> anyway that is all that I have for you today if you have any suggestions for what we should or for a video to make be sure to like it or be sure to leave it in the comments below I will leave my personal uh, Goodreads and our joint Instagram which is where Kayleen posts the most often down in the description below be sure to like comment and subscribe if you so wish and until next time, happy reading!